Is Doug Peterson, Jay, let me start with you. Is Doug Peterson the best man for the job? No. Byron Leftwich would have been the best man for the job. Now, what you're hearing is that Byron Leftwich chose not to take this job because of Trent Bolke, who is the GM. So this makes me just wonder, HD, about Shah Khan from a leadership perspective, right? A guy like Trent Bolke, who's been with this organization, you know, you hear about his relationship in San Francisco, how that led to Coach Harborough then leaving, right? Because of this power hungry style that he wants, that he has, that he approaches. You hear about what he did last year, obviously having Urban Meyer come on, like those decisions. And it doesn't feel like he's being held accountable. Now, I give Byron Leftwich all the credit in the world for turning down the opportunity because, look, I want to be set up for success. I want to come into a situation in which, hey, I know these people want to see me succeed. There is nobody playing any tricks, trying to sabotage my name. And that's what you're hearing about happening with inside the organization of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And shout out to Byron Leftwich because being set up for success is something that uh, black coaches have not been done, I think, since Mike Tomlin. Mm. Right or wrong? Right. I, I don't think it has been done. You look at David Cully, you look at Steve Wilkes, both of those guys going in one year. Now, when you look at Byron Leftwich, he's a guy – that's not a normal guy in my eyes because he was drafted by who, Jay? Hmm. Yeah, I hear the Jacksonville he's Jaguars. Jackson. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's part, of, and I, and and he's part of the organization. And I, and I understand that it's different ownership, but he is a Jacksonville Jaguar. He's a guy that won a Super Bowl as an offensive coordinator. He has the credentials. He's a guy that's been there in that city. He understands that city. So he is the best guy for the job. So if he says, okay, I want my guy as a GM, you should have no problem with it if he's the best guy for the job, mm -hmm. right? Because – He's looking at the situation like, okay, I don't want to happen to me what happened to David Cully. I don't want to happen to me what happened to Steve Wilkes. If some kind of way my first year things don't go the way that, that, that it's planned, right? So I understand Byron Leftwich, but it's also a damn shame that he has to take his name away because that's the mindset I, uh, of the situation. Can I say something about this, guys? Um, I didn't play. Like, Jay, you, you two have played at the highest level in sports. I'm not a black man, right? But it does occur to me with these jobs, when Byron Leftwich is like, let me set up for success. When David Cully gets an interim job with a terrible team, bad organization, mm -hmm. no quarterback, yep. he's 67 years old, clearly that's an interim job. A lot of res the response from, I think, white people who don't quite get it, and I'm not talking, again, I never want to, I'm not addressing people who are racist. I'm addressing people who don't self-identify as racist, right? Is. But That's still right. don't understand it. They're like, well, listen, beggars can't be choosers, right? You're asking someone for a job. Well, who are you asking for a job? <laughs> mm -hmm. the, the league is completely owned by white people, right? Now, why, there are no black owners. Why is that? Is that because black people, again, I'll say, ask it again, are intrinsically inferior at making money? No, it's not about that. It's about the history of the country. So then people say, still, okay, but we got here however we got here. I don't see race. Well, maybe you should. That's, that's number one, because if you look around at the distribution of jobs, it's like the, the black candidates have to come hat in hand and just kind of take whatever's given instead of saying, no, wait a minute. This job needs to be set up for success. success. You, you, hit, you, hit it, you hit it on the head. And, and, and I remember Stephen A. talking about this when it came to black coaches in the NBA. Right. And them getting certain jobs, but not being set up for success. You can't just say, hey, we gave this guy opportunity at this job. But the job is at the bottom of the totem pole in the National Football League. Mm. And, you know, he's not going to be set up for success. Harry, can we take it an, another oh, step? Let's up? go. Let's go, Jay. And, and, and everybody should mark this down. Here's how disappointed I am today. And I should have led with this, but I knew ultimately we will get here. So the one minority owner of an NFL team. Shah Khan, correct? Yep. Which is the team we're discussing. Which I said all team? white yes. owners. Yeah. There is one yeah. non-white. He's not African-American, but he's yeah. non-white. The yeah. one minority mm -hmm. owner yep. of an NFL team. What conversations have we been having over the last several months, years actually, about the lack of head coaches in this league who are minorities, right? So this is what we talked about yesterday. Why wouldn't the one minority owner of NFL team say, you know what? I'm going to be that person Jump to say, now, on my watch, it's happening. Byron Leftwich, what do you need? What do you need to make this work? Like, I want to make this work. You are the best person for this city. You are the best oh. person 
for your relationship that you have with Super Bowl winning quarterbacks for a young quarterback in Trevor Lawrence, it's time to do that. Why wouldn't you want to roll the carpet out for a guy that you want to hire that you feel like is the best guy for the job and Byron Leftwich? Thank you. Why the would, best guy for the job, Why Harry? would you not want to roll the carpet out for that guy and say, hey, I'm going to do and give you all the resources that you need for this organization to be successful because we've seen it back in, what year was that? Was that 2007? It was 17. Mm. Yep, because that was my last year in the league. That was two, it was 2017 when they had that success with Ramsey and those guys and Gogway and Calais Campbell and all those guys. So you got a taste. You... You got a spoonful of it, so you know what it feels like. So if you want to get your organization back to where it was back in 2017, why would you not roll out the red carpet for a guy like Byron Leftwich, who is a Jaguar? What question for you, Jay. Is the, does the fact that Doug Peterson, they're looking at one guy that didn't give him everything he wanted, they moved on, or he mm -hmm. moved on. Now they look at the next guy. Is the, does the fact that he won a Super Bowl pretty recently – mean anything to you. In yeah, other words, I, yeah, it's a white I, head I'm coach. Not, he won a Super Bowl. Let me lay this not, one will slide. I'm not mad at the decision. I'm right. a little I'm indifferent on it. I'm not saying that Doug Peterson can't do a good job and that can't make Trevor Lawrence successful. I'm mm. not saying that at all. All I'm saying is we talk a lot about, hey, just don't hire a guy because he's black. Well, also you're hiring the best candidate, right? Who's played for your organization, who understands what your city and what your fans want, how to be successful. He's coached great quarterbacks in this league. It feels like it was a perfect scenario for that to happen. And I don't know why you don't give him the capability and the resources to be successful. Wait, wait a minute. I got to ask you guys a question. Who won the uh, Super Bowl last year? Tom Brady. And, and what, Byron left, which what? was calling the plays. I'll yeah. be dead. Oh, I'll be dead. wow. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.